Okay, I've tested the voltage output of the power transformer and found it to be acceptable. In most of these radios, the power transformer has three separate secondary windings. A center tapped winding for the high voltage, which is usually between 600 and 700 volts center tapped. And then you have a 6.3 volt winding for the tube filaments. The really old radios had a 2.5 volt winding for the tube filaments. And then you have a 5 volt winding for the rectifier tube filament. Okay, I've started to replace some of the capacitors, or actually one so far. As you recall, this capacitor had been soldered in by a previous technician and it was installed rather sloppy. In fact, the connection just broke loose just by wiggling the part, as you may recall. So I've installed a, a new capacitor in place of where that one was. And as you can see, what I did, I installed a terminal strip and then just soldered the capacitor and the associated wiring to that terminal strip. And now we have a nice sturdy mounting there and a good connection so there's no worries about that capacitor coming loose. Okay, right here is where this capacitor was originally soldered across and I'm going to do the same thing there. I'm going to disconnect this to remove the original capacitor from the circuit and then I will install a new electrolytic capacitor there. Once I remove this original capacitor, I found a date code on it of 1965. So we know it's was probably somewhere in that time period. It was after 1965 when this yellow job was put in there. And the way we remove these capacitors, well, First, you need a soldering iron and rosin core solder and desoldering braid and one of these handheld vacuum solder suckers comes in handy as well. And you need the standard equipment like needle nose pliers, wire cutters, that sort of thing. Now, the easiest way to change one of these capacitors is to simply clip the leads off at the capacitor and then bend the leads back into a U shape on both the remains of the old part as well as the new capacitor and then crimp the leads in place and then solder them. That looks kind of sloppy so I try not to do that whenever possible. Sometimes there will be a capacitor that's in a tight spot that you really can't get to so sometimes it's easier to do it that way but I'd rather just desolder the original capacitor at the terminal and then install the new capacitor where the old one came from and in order to do that you just place the desoldering braid on top of the terminal you wish to desolder and then place your hot soldering iron tip on top of the desoldering braid and then you can actually see the solder being so soaked up into the desoldering braid. Or you can use this handheld vacuum pump. And once the solder, once you heat the solder with the soldering iron, you just place this, the tip of this pump, over the molten solder. Push the button and it will suck the solder up into, into the pump. And when replacing a capacitor, I think I've mentioned this in a previous video, but it's worth mentioning, mentioning this again. There are two things on the old capacitor that you want to take note of. The actual value in capacitance, which in most cases is given in microfarads, and the working voltage. For example, your old capacitor may be marked as 0.05 microfarads at, at 600 working volts or let's say 400 working volts. 
you want to use a new capacitor with a capacitance value that's as close to the original as possible and the working voltage of your replacement capacitor should be equal to or greater than the working voltage of the old capacitor that you're replacing. So if we want to replace a 0 .05 microfarad capacitor at 400 working volts, it is perfectly okay to use a modern 0 .047 microfarad capacitor at 630 working volts. 0 .047 or 0.05 or 0 0.05, however you choose to say it. There's not really that much of a difference there, and the radio is not going to notice it one bit. Now, when replacing an electrolytic capacitor such as this that I just showed you, take note that these electrolytic capacitors are polarized, which means you have to have them wired correctly in the circuit or else the new capacitor will blow up on you and possibly cause circuit damage. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to get started on recapping this. Okay, let's do this capacitor right here. And I'm showing you how the original one is installed and I'll show you the replacement once I have it in have the replacement installed. As you can see, this capacitor has some insulation sleeving over the lead. That's to prevent the barrel lead on the capacitor from touching a terminal that it doesn't need to touch. And it's very important when you replace a capacitor that if it's necessary to insulate the lead to prevent shorts, then you need to do it. And this is what we use to do it. This is called spaghetti. You can order it from Antique Electronics Supply, or you can use just insulation that's stripped off of hookup wire. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, here's the original capacitor removed from the circuit. I don't know how well this is showing up on the monitor, but there's our capacitance value in microfarads at 0.05. I don't know why they felt the need to print that on there twice, but oh well. And then here's our working voltage. Working voltage DC, 200 volts. And just for size comparison, the old capacitor on top and the new capacitor on the bottom, which is a 0 .047 microfarad at 630 working volts, which will work just fine. Okay, here's the capacitor installed, and unfortunately, I couldn't install this the way I wanted to because the leads on the new capacitor were not long enough to run from this tube socket terminal all the way over here, so I had to use part of the existing leads from the old capacitor, and don't worry, I insulated this terminal with heat shrink tubing to make sure there's no possibility of it touching anything. Just the key thing to remember is just make a good mechanical connection and make sure the connection soldered firmly. Okay, I think we're going to call it a day on this video since it's getting lengthy and I will I will have part two of this video uploaded shortly. Okay, thanks for watching and hope you got something out of this and more to come later.